fault code error 227 on a Worcester CDI. So when I arrived at the property, there was a puddle underneath the boiler. So I'm just checking the boiler, but nothing at all is wet until I notice something and see if you notice it. It's the filling loop key, right? So if you look at the filling key, it's turned to the unlocked position, which means it's tried to top it up and it's probably dripped out of there. Now I'm checking the expansion vessel. First thing I'm doing is I'm checking for air. A little burst of air came out, but nothing else. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to isolate the boiler in order to drain it down. So that's the flow and return pipes. That's the drain off valve. We put a hose pipe on there. You can zip tie on or use uh, whatever attachment you have to just keep it in place. Now it's already at zero bar, but there will still be water in the boiler. And you need something open when you're actually pumping up or recharging an expansion vessel. So that's what we're doing. You have to have something open. So I go into my bag of tricks and we can see there we've got a Schrader valve tool and we need the Schrader valve. So that's where I keep all the Schrader valves. Otherwise you end up losing it. You get these little Fernox uh, test tubes. If you have a spare one, definitely keep them for that. So all we do is counterclockwise, unscrew it. Now you do have to test, right? So when I push down the Schrader valve, I was checking if water would come pouring out. So I know it's not, water's not gonna come pouring out. I know it's really drained down. We can replace it with a new one. So it's the same thing, put it in the same place. And this time you're screwing it clockwise. Now it is possible if the diaphragm is split, you will have water gushing out if you do this live without draining down or without checking first that air actually comes out and not water. Now it's time to top it up. I'm going to put it to one bar because when I take it off, it's going to drop down to about nine, uh, 0 0.90 or uh, 0 0.8. But check what happens next. And I don't know if anyone else has had this problem with the Milwaukee pump, but I've put it on and maybe I'm doing something wrong. I have no idea. But I've put it at one bar and just watch here. Totally overshoots. So I've just, I've had to turn it off. Um, I don't know why it does that but it would just keep going. Then obviously it would uh, explode the uh, expansion vessel, but this happens with this pump in particular. So I just have to let out all the excess air that is put in. And there we go, it's all right. Now we've got to check it with leak detection fluid to make sure the valve is actually shutting off. No bubbles. So it's working great. Now, when you're changing an expansion vessel, you also need to check the AAV and the PRV. That was closed. That the AAV was turned off from the moment it's been, it was installed. It's never been on. So it's never releasing air. Now I'm gonna check the, uh, the condense trap because 227 can sometimes be like an earth fault. And there we go, it is pretty blocked as you can tell. So always check the condensed truck, no matter what fault it is, to be honest, just check it, clean it. You don't want like a secondary problem to come along. We need to check the PRV because it's been letting by. So there we go. I'm not gonna undo the entire thing. I'm not, I'm just gonna do a swap. So um, I can actually leave the body in place, right? And just replace the actual functioning bit, which is the spring. Um, so that's what we're going to do here. At first I thought I could just clean it up, but watch what happens. And this is why you have to replace it. I thought I could just clean that up. Maybe there's a bit of gunk on there and just put it back in, but always give it a test by pushing it in. And there you go. It just undid itself and broke. 
uh, it was seized. It was seized in that in that position. So there we go. We've got a, a new one to go in from my bag of tricks. Then I keep some of the spares. Like sometimes you want to keep the rubbers and and stuff like that, the washers, because you can reuse them. You've got to drop something. Oh, it's not a repair job, is it? Then all we do is just screw that back in. Now, needless to say, it's got to be the same bar uh, PRV. You can't just go put in like a six bar or seven bar PRV if it needs a three bar, you know, stuff like that. Just uh, be wary of what you're actually doing. There we go, tiny back on. Now we can close the drain off valve in the boiler and pull off the hose pipe. Don't need that anymore. There we go. Then we can turn on the flow, turn on the return. Now I'm trying to do all of this whilst looking through the camera. So I'm not actually looking at the boiler. I'm looking at my camera as I do everything in this job, which makes it all the more difficult. As you can tell, I've moved um, the key into the locked position. So it's not going to spill water out like it did when the customer was doing it. And it's on zero. So we need to keep topping it up. Now, I have a feeling that the customer had maybe overfilled it. Because if you overfill your boiler, you can actually lose pressure in your expansion vessel. It'll, it'll put so much pressure on the expansion vessel that it will actually lose some of its pressure. So that's a telltale sign that the customer has overfilled is if the expansion vessel and the PRV have gone. It doesn't always mean that. It could also mean they've got bad water quality. Or lack of servicing, for instance. So let's move the hose pipe out of the way. We're going to test it with hot water, make sure everything runs. The customer hasn't been able to shower for a while as the boiler wasn't running. We kept losing pressure. There you go, it's showing uh, that it's detected the water flowing, so we know that the flow turbine flow sensors are, are working. We can see by the symbol that the boiler has fired up as well and we're just waiting for it to actually get hot just in case there's maybe some sort of blockage uh, within the secondary heat heat exchanger double checking that everything works so we, we're testing the hot water and we're also testing the heating as well to make sure everything works which it did